Hello everyone, my name is Robert and I'm a software developer and I spend a lot of time building uh, applications in Microsoft Technologies as well as doing lots of talks on Microsoft Technologies. And one thing I use in my day-to-day -day work as well as in many of my talks is a technology called NuGet. NuGet is a fantastic piece of software. So let's just see quickly what it does. I have a simple console application here just for the sake of having a console application. And what I can do is I can go manage NuGet packages, it will connect online to the NuGet official package source, and it will show me a list of packages that are available. So I could see things like jQuery, JSON.NET, and so on. So if I needed something in my application, maybe in my console application, I need to do passing of JSON, I could hit install, and it would pull that down onto my machine, install it, and, er and uh, have everything working. So you can see here, it's added the reference in. If I do something more complex like anti-framework, it could add in files. Um, if I do something like j uh, JavaScript, uh, any of the JavaScript libraries like jQuery, it would add in scripts folder. So NuGet is fantastic for this, for these sort of scenarios. However, when I do talks, I want to make sure that I can work in a variety of environments. And that means testing in various things, testing and lower resolutions, because while I'm running it, a nice 1600 by 900 resolution now most of the time I'm on projectors that are anything from 1024768 to 1280 by 800 so I could run into really different resolutions I can also run into different connectivity problems and so you know I always want to test and make sure things work offline so if we just turn off the wireless for a moment and we try to do NuGet again what we'll see is that it's going to fail for us because obviously the NuGet servers are no longer there and without the NuGet service, how can I do a NuGet demo? So what I'd like to show you is just two tricks to get around this. And these tricks allow you, uh, may help you with your talks, but may also help you with your just day-to-day, -day, give you a backup for your, for your own things. So for instance, let's just say I was doing this talk, and uh, I was just doing a talk, and I actually just needed JSON.NET. Maybe I wanted to add in something else. I would, when I had connectivity ahead of time, like now, uh, like I did, go and set that all up. If we look in the solutions folder though, you'll see we get a packages folder. And this has a repositories.config file in here, as well as all my files. And so what's very easy to do is I can just copy that. We'll just paste that on the desktop here. And then we can go to the back end of Visual Studio Library Package Manager, go to Package Manager Settings, and specify package sources. We can have official sources, like the NuGet server here. There is also uh, alternative sources. This is the ASP.NET nightly build source, which is once again, it's a web-based one, but it allows me to get ASP.NET stuff at different times. I can add in my own packet sources here. So we'll call this demo, or let's call it demo1, and instead of specifying HTTP, we'll just go and grab that packages folder and say we'll point it to that. We'll give it a second. Now when I go into NuGet, you'll see I not only have uh, the NuGet package server here, but I can have demo one and I can click on that and you can see exactly instantly it comes up even though I'm offline, it'll show me what's there. So that's very useful. Another useful trick with NuGet and packages is this the package cache. So if we hit browse, it'll take us to the package cache folder. Every time you download a package, it stores a copy in here for you. Uh, and most of the time this is quite small. In my case, you can see it's 140 items that are taking up only about 40 megs but you can clear this out if you need the space. This is also useful as a package source, so we can get rid of this demo one, and we can call this the cache source. And we'll just paste in the path to that and say OK. And now, I can come in here, go to the cache source, and there's all the packages, pages after pages of the packages that are available to me. And so I could find json.net in here, and use it that way. And so this gives me a nice way of having updates. So if you have installed something and you need it again and you have no internet access, the cache repository could be a good way to do that. The cache source as well as maybe a custom one for your own talks can give you a nice option as a backup if you don't have internet access or you at a venue and you're worried about slow internet access and you want something really fast for your demos. Well, what's really great with this though is uh, if we go back into here, we can always go and untick these so I can have this set up like I do with my 
uh, lightly build for ASP.NET, I don't have that ticked all the time. But when I want to work with that, I can just tick that, leave, come back in. So this gives you a nice way to toggle these things on and off without having to reset it up every time. So hopefully that gave you a good idea of some cool little tricks in NuGet that you can use to make your presentations better, as well as to help you when you have no connectivity in the future when you're actually trying to do your day-to-day -day dev. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.